It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is a Tuesday morning on your feel good breakfast show. Though uh, news headlines have not been so feel good over the past couple of days because really? Listeria has dominated them since the weekend with a lot of hysteria sp spreading across the country with regards to processed and ready made foods. So we've decided to dedicate this morning's health mm. segment to that topic. Now, in the past 13 months, 1,000 cases of Listeriosis have been confirmed, and those are. Uh, and of those, excuse me, mm -hmm. at least 180 uh, people have died from the disease. So tragic news and so important then for us to talk about this. What is, I think, a national crisis? It's one of the biggest exactly. outbreaks of listeriosis. And to help remove the hysteria around listeria, we've got, of course, our medical expert, Dr. Darren Green, in the house. Good Dr. Morning. Darren, so good to have you here. Thank you. Thanks. And I'm so happy that it's a ta at a time such as this because mm. a lot of people are creating so much fear around the situation. So don't you just want to put it into context for us? What exactly is listeria? Sure. So it's a food-borne bacteria, mm -hmm. just like you have bacteria causing a sore throat, etc. So too, this type of organism is a bacteria, and it's transported and it's ingested via food yeah. and a, an array of foods. So yeah. from dairy products like oh, wow. unpasteurized milk, all the way across to the soft cheeses like brie and camembert, mm. mm -hmm. uh, and then of course through to the processed meats that we eat, things like salami, things yeah. like uh, processed uh, viandas, sausages, etc., etc. Yeah. Um, so meat products. So whether it's beef, poultry, or chicken, and dairy, those are all the foodstuffs that yeah. actually uh, have the ability to house and carry the organism. Mm -hmm. What's uh, so spectacular about uh, Listeria, this, the, the family or species is called monocytogenes, and uh, it can survive at cold temperatures, even naught degrees in a refrigerator, what? where it multiplies wow. yeah. optimally at that temperature. <gasps> so that's quite interesting as well. Uh, but what we don't know is that uh, people, obviously, can kill this if they cure their meat properly. Curing as in cooking it properly. Yeah, mm -hmm. because somebody the actually tweeted control. yesterday and said, can't we just fry the polonium? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you have to, but you have to get the temperature inside the product up to above 70, 74 degrees. Yeah, wow. yeah. To actually uh, kill, kill it. it. And okay. that's not exactly how people prefer to that's cook it. And their the concentration exactly. from staying uh, in those packets in the fridge, yeah. specifically cold meats, mm. when it gets that nice slimy layer on it Yoop. and we leave it in the fridge for, for more than a week open, yeah. you can imagine that then helps wow. facilitate it. But, and then also in the soil from fruit and vegetables, uh, carrots that are grown, for example, in the soil, uh, you can get uh, spread of, of the organism through that as well, yeah. near sources of water and uh, obviously through the soil. So you yeah. need to wash things properly before eating. Wow. Yeah. We're going to get to understanding it a bit uh, further uh, later on, but I just want to quickly, because I like clarifying things so that when you yeah. speak about it in conversation, you, you're able to make it's sense. Easier. The difference between listeria and listeriosis good, and how those good, are used. In, yeah. So listeria is just the name of the bug. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and its family or its surname is monocytogenes. Mm -hmm. And they're different uh, cousins and relatives. Some of them are more deadly than others. Some of them have, the, some of them have this, the ability to in, induce more damage, cross the blood-brain barrier, cause things like meningitis. Others stay in the gut. Many people don't know up to 10% of the population have listeria in the gut and aren't even oh, carrying wow. uh, symptoms. So oh. it typically occurs in people that are immunocompromised, yeah. not in healthy individuals. So your chances of, of developing a listeria and it going on are if, you, if you're young, like a neonate, just born, first mm. 28 days of life. Mm. If you're pregnant, your immune system is compromised. Uh -huh. If you're on chronic meds like diabetics and people yeah. that have had transplants and cancer and so forth, HIV patients are more prone and then the very elderly as well. All right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to get back to that, talk about ST6, exactly. which is not standard 6 when it comes to listeriosis. <laughs> exactly. And of course, <laughs> 180 it. lives lost. I want to talk That's about how many people actually mm. die from yeah. this disease Great after stuff. this. It's my feel good breakfast show. Oh, sadly, we just found out that Dr. Darren Green has not yet watched Black Panther. We oh. will not have it! <laughs> we will not have it all! Come on, get back in the system. But uh, speaking about getting back in the system, we're talking about a very serious topic today. Uh, that listeria, listeriosis, the outbreak that's happened in, in, in South Africa. ST6 is a particular strand of listeria that is causing all the damage. Explain to yeah. me uh, uh, 66 so, and what So you have about. like, uh, you know, the family called the listeria and then, the, you know, the, the local family uh, mm -hmm. is called 
monocytogenies. Yes. The SD6 is just a substrain. So like we all have that da dangerous cousin yeah. or that uh, loopy cousin oh, or family member that, that some it, people yeah. try to avoid. But that's the one that has the ability to incur yeah. a lot that of fatal. Mutated. Yeah, it's a lot of fatal damage. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means, obviously, so there are different toxins involved, mm -hmm. and they actually become hosted in the host cells. So the, the bacteria enters the host cell, which is your and my body cells, uh -huh. whether it's in the gut or the brain or whatever. And then, obviously, you have the effects of the toxic effects of, of, of that infection causing damage to the cells on a mm -hmm. local level, yeah. leading to cell death in that okay. system. Uh, and that's what causes the, the deadly nature yeah. uh, of the specific and, and what are bacteria. the symptoms of it? I mean, how do I know that I have listeriosis? You don't, because it looks like so many other things. Exactly. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, right at the start. Mm -hmm. Neck yeah. stiffness and headaches, uh, if it becomes quite yeah, severe yeah, yeah. and multiplies a lot in your body. So you don't really know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it obviously is often a slow progressive disease and it's not like a self-limiting gastro food poisoning that goes away after three, four days. It's something where you get chronically, you know, more and more ill. Uh, and as I mentioned, the, the populations at risk being the neonates, uh, then of course the older people as well, mm. and then pregnant women, because it has the ability obviously in pregnancy to cause early miscarriages wow. uh, and also uh, obviously antenatal deaths. Mm. Uh, when it crosses uh, the placenta. Yeah. And it's often an after diagnosis when they study the placenta with hectic techniques that they can demonstrate that. So certainly the, the strains, uh, the ability and the symptom complex, very difficult to put into, into a general context because it's not, they're vague symptoms that belong to lots of other clinical yes. diseases. And everyone that has gastro at the moment that arrives in an ER uh, really is concerned. So then we have to reassure them and obviously bring them back, review them and explain, because you can't go and test every single person. Yeah. So once found and diagnosed properly, is it possible to treat it, and if so, how? 100%. So it's a bacteria that responds to an antibiotic, and most of them get treated with intravenous ampicillin, which is like amoxicillin, just an intravenous form, uh, basically, and uh, they respond quite well to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good news to know that it can, it can exactly. be taken care can of. Be treated. I think there's a lot of panic um, around that. And I heard also on the radio yesterday that one needs to, if, if you suspect, or well, for instance, if you've had these mm. processed meats in your fridge, and you're not quite sure, you need to remove all the food that has been yeah. Get it out, yeah. in yeah. the fridge. So clear your fridge. That, just talk to us quickly about yes. the measures you need to take in your kitchen. Yeah, so obviously uh, washing your hands, cleaning fruit and vegetables, getting the soil off them, peeling carrots with a peeler first before chowing them with, with the sand and, 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 and soil around them, and so with any other fruits and vegetables. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, obviously, uh, the, the, mater the, the materials and meat products. Yeah. Make sure you cook meat properly. Yeah. Uh, and if it's the processed stuff, get rid of it. We want to talk about how the bacteria got to the factory in the first place. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more with Dr. <laughs> Green after this. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. We're sitting down with Dr. Darren Green chatting about listeriosis. Of course, there's a lot of hysteria and concern about it. But we want to know because products are being removed from the shelves left, right and center. And people are confused about it. Just to put it into context, how could this bacteria have gotten into those factories where it all originated? They said, what, factories in Polokwane? Um, you know, let us know. Like, how did it all yeah, come so about? If you look at the actual uh, infection, the organism itself, and yeah. the abilities that it has, remember I said that it, it multiplies and enjoys temperatures all the way down to naught degrees. Yeah. Uh, and it can survive at cool temperatures too. Wow. The refrigerator, obviously, etc. But if you think about where meat comes from in the first place, they're out in the field. Uh, they are obviously uh, grazing. It's beef. It's poultry. It's pork. Uh, those are the sources, and, and, and obvi obviously of things in processed meats, mm -hmm. whether it be salami, viennas, whatever. Poloni has got a lot of other things in it too. But uh, anyway, and then obviously with that, they're binding agents. Yeah. They, they are. Uh, preservatives and flavorants and all of that's added to some of the processed meats. Mm -hmm. uh, and you must imagine that the, the ability of this organism, what makes it so toxic, is that it can exist in an aerobic and an anaerobic environment. In other words, it doesn't need oxygen to survive. Okay. 
So that's okay. quite special. I mean, some bacteria yeah. that are anaerobic have the ability to multiply, even if there's no oxygen around. Yeah. And that's why food that stands long, that's not cured properly or cooked properly, yeah. will uh, obviously put you at, at greater risk. And so too, obviously, the, the things like milk that's unpasteurized, that hasn't been put through stringent processes of killing those germs before yeah. you ingest the milk. And you can't deny that this is a food source, and I'm talking about these processed meats, that is... Uh, an essential part of uh, a lot of families' households and, and, and you know their, their day to day lives, and, and so this is a massive impact on them. If if you have to that. hear that you now have to clear your entire fridge and entire month's mm. groceries, that's a lot of money. It right? is. But but it is that important because can it spread through the packaging? So even if if the processed meat is there but hasn't yet been opened. Can the bacteria spread through the packaging and contaminate other food sources in your fridge? Yeah, I think the the, the ability there is you don't if you don't have Ziploc bags, for example, that are sealed. Uh, certainly, it would be able to spread in the fridge, and at that temperature, it multiplies at rapid, rapid rates. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the barrier control, it certainly helps having your things in airtight containers. But remember, inside the container, still it multiplies at a massive rate. Once cleaned out, yeah. What do you what do you still need to do? Because I'm, I'm I'm assuming because the bacteria thrive at naught uh, degrees and lower because it can multiply. What, how do you clean your fridge to make sure that it doesn't You should it doesn't use a general happen? antiseptic, like uh, something that contains an agent like a bit of bleach, and an, uh, you know, an antiseptic perhaps, yeah. uh, and, and wipe it down completely. There's yes. no, no residue of any of the foodstuffs or oils that are left behind, mm -hmm. and that should be absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, and remember also to just notice the warning signs and early symptoms. Yeah. Sure. I actually heard something that healthy people who eat food that are infected by yes. the bacteria will not be affected even if they do eat the food. Is that true? So 10% so of the population actually can have listeria yeah. in their guts yeah. and have no symptoms. Okay. And they do have it. The even if they eat the bologna, that's like... So, yeah, but so, so it might even be living there for the past 20 years and they haven't had symptoms. Yeah. So particularly it manifests when your immune system is crippled or weakened uh -huh. by many different ways, either other, other infections or medications yeah. or disease okay. uh, that lays you bare to be attacked by it. And then you can't, uh, you know, respond with a decent immune, immune attack. Yeah. Oh, wow. With something like this, uh, what does the health department do to secure the safety of the nation to yes. make sure that it doesn't spread to a point where it's out of control. What, what, what's in action right yeah, now? So I don't represent the health department here today, but yes. what I have uh, been in touch with, obviously, is getting their briefs and updates exactly. to all the ERs and emergency centres to mm -hmm. identify early and so forth. And I think one of the things that they advocate quite strongly is, uh, firstly, stop eating the processed meats and foods yeah. mm -hmm. uh, immediately. Secondly, look at the way your food is prepared. Don't eat uh, leftovers that aren't heated up properly when you do eat, the, eat them again. Wash your hands thoroughly and look mm. at the process of preparing food, yeah. etc. in you and your children. <laughs> uh, and obviously, uh, uh, with that goes the responsibility of if you notice the symptoms early to, to be tested. It's just, uh, they do a blood culture, mm -hmm. which happens in our state facilities or uh, obviously in our private sector. They can do a blood culture, a urine culture and a stool culture as well. Uh, and then obviously in, in the cases of pregnancy, the, they even look at the, the placenta. We've actually got a caller on the line, Estelle from Bloemfontein. Good morning, Estelle. What is your question or comment for Dr. Darren? Yes, hi. Good morning, uh, Tim. I would like to know from Dr. Dr uh, Green. Morning. My mom has been eating bologna for more than a year now. Mm. Um, could she be infected or something like that? Because she's got a uh, running tummy uh, on a con uh, continuous basis. Oh. Yeah, so if, if she's got symptoms of diarrhea, uh, there, there are obviously many things. Is that constant for like a month, a year, or whatever? That would depend. And she would obviously be able to do a stool culture. So hand in a stool sample that could be studied and identify either the presence or absence of, of the bacteria. Yeah. So it's simple as that. I think if you've had persistent diarrhea for a period, and you know, the fact that you haven't got ill from eating a year's poloni yeah. doesn't mean you've got it now because yeah. people are more aware of it now yeah. and there have been so many deaths as well. It just means be vigilant about the symptoms and the timing of those symptoms. Yeah. If one of the family members presents with symptoms, 
What did the rest of the family do? Is it a, a, as drastic a case as now having to walk around with gloves around the house or that's face a, masks and yeah, things like good, that? I think uh, the ability to spread the pathogen would be uh, via, uh, obviously, not washing your hands and yeah. sharing utensils, uh, droplet and saliva spread. But it's, it's predominantly a food-borne pathogen. So working with those foods afterwards and touching then someone else's cup, yes. for example, after working with cold meats and processed meats, obviously puts them at risk. So you need to apply all the good principles of hy hygiene in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, Dr. Green, as always, we appreciate your time and expertise. No, and uh, I, th I hope that that has helped you to be more enlightened around listeria and the hysteria and listeriosis and all those kinds of jargon we've been yeah. throwing around. And, uh, of course, we'll be doing this again with Dr. Green next Sweet, week. Have a wonderful you. day. So thank you very much.